Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to episode 2 of the Corporation Code of the Philippines. This afternoon, we are going to discuss the uh, Title 2 of the Corporation Code. So let me share my screen with you. Okay, Title 2, Incorporation and Organization of Private Corporations. Okay, okay. and the, under Title 2, no, the law will provide you the uh, required number and qualifications of incorporators. Please take note that this discussion will dwell on the old corporation code or Batas Pambansa Bilang 68. Note also that there will be amendments to these provisions of the law and we will discuss the amendments in a separate episode no, with respect to the revised corporation code. Okay, for our purpose, we will discuss first the old corporation code. Now, under the old corporation code, incorporators are stockholders or members mentioned in the articles of incorporation originally forming and composing the corporation and who are signatories thereof. You have to take note, class, that when you say incorporators, these are the original stockholders or members in the case of a non-stock corporation and that the names of the stockholders are mentioned in the articles of incorporation. Now, class, when you say incorporators, no, because class, not all stockholders, no, not all stockholders' names or stockholders will be listed in the articles of incorporation. Remember, class, that the articles of incorporation is the constitution, quote and quote, of the corporation, no, and that um, this piece of document is submitted to the SEC prior to the incorporation of the supposed corporation. Now, if you are part of the original group of stockholders, at the time that the Articles of Incorporation is submitted no, to, the, to the SEC, then you are considered as an incorporator. An incorporator class is a technical term, meaning to say you cannot interchange it with the, with the term corporator or stockholder not stock not all stockholders are incorporators no so and not all incorporators can be stockholder at the present time when you say incorporators again these are stockholders whose names are mentioned in the articles of incorporation as originally forming and composing the corporation and who are signatories thereof when you say corporators, it will refer to a stockholder whose name is not mentioned or is not written in the Articles of Incorporation because again, class, a corporator becomes a stockholder of the corporation after the filing of the Articles of Incorporation or after the registration of the corporation with the SEC. Now, there are certain requirements imposed by law with respect to an incorporator. Number one, it should be a natural person. Now, again, under the old corporation code, only natural persons can be incorporators or those originally forming the corporation. Now, the rationale under the old law requiring incorporators to be national, natural persons rather is that if a corporation or, or a juridical person is to be allowed as an incorporator, then it will add burden to the corporation being formed because aside from the fact that the incorporators will have to discuss among themselves the basic terms and conditions of the articles of incorporation, no, they will be dealing with a corporation who, who is governed by its own board of incorporators. So the old corporation code deemed it wise to limit the incorporators only to, to natural persons and not juridical persons. Again, 
the basic rationale under the old law is that it will be more cumbersome for a corporation for a corporation yet to be formed to be organized with an incorporator who is a corporation in and by itself. Now, another qualification is that the incorporator must be of legal age, meaning he already reached the age of majority. The age of majority in the Philippines, take note, is not 21 years old, but 18 years old. So if you are 18 years of age, you can now be an incorporator. Now, question, can a corporator or a stockholder um, be 16 years old, meaning to say not yet of legal age. No? In other words, the classic question is, can a 16-year-old person purchase shares of stocks and therefore become a stockholder of a certain corporation? Answer, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Again, the qualification imposed under Title II of the Corporation Code applies only to an incorporator and not to a stockholder no, who purchase shares after the incorporation or registration of the corporation with the SEC. So take note that these requirements apply only to incorporators and not stockholders. Okay. Now, an incorporator must own or subscribe for at least one share of stock of the corporation. You cannot be considered as an incorporator unless you have an interest in the company. That is the basic um, um, requirement under uh, Title II. And then, class, the number of the minimum number of incorporators you know, under the old corporation code is five but not more than 15, okay? And that lastly, majority of the incorporators must be residents of the Philippines. Take note, class, that the law does not require all incorporators to be residing in the Philippines. The only requirement of the law is that majority of the incorporators must reside in the Philippines. So if there are five incorporators, at least three incorporators must reside in the Philippines. If you are given a problem class, for example, A is a Japanese citizen, can he be an incorporator? No, the answer is yes, of course. As long as the other corporators forming majority or at least three, no, out of five of the incorporators must reside in the Philippines. Now, the requirement imposed by law is residency and not citizenship. Do not be confused. Because obviously, there can be a foreign national who is residing in the Philippines. In which case, the requirement of the law is perfectly complied with because the requirement is not the citizenship, but residence of the incorporators. Okay. Take note and take note. Under the old corporation code, a corporation can exist with the maximum term of 50 years, 50 taon, 50 taon, no? 50 years, not more than 50 years from the date of incorporation unless it is sooner dissolved or extended for another 50 years no? or unless you amend the articles of incorporation to short to shorten the corporate term, in which case the corporation is necessarily dissolved because its corporate term has been reduced. Okay. Now, class, under Section 13 of the old corporation code, you will find there a 25, 25 threshold amount. The 25, 25 threshold amount. What do we mean when we say 25-25 threshold amount? Under Section 13 of the old corporation code, at least 25% of the authorized capital stock, no, as stated in the articles, must be subscribed. And at least 25% of the total subscription must be paid upon subscription. No, the balance is to be payable on a date or dates fixed in the contract of subscription 
without need of call or in the absence of a fixed date or dates upon call for payment by the board of directors. When you say call class, this is the term used when the board will formally ask for payment of the balance of the subscription or a part thereof. Now, class, this 2525 threshold no, uh, under Section 13 means that at least 25% of the authorized capital stock must be subscribed, and out of that subscription, 25 again must be paid. Okay. Now, class, if you will be asked, no, for example, a is a subscriber. No, A is a subscriber. He subscribed for 100 shares. No, at least 25 of the 100 shares is how many shares? 25 shares. Now, if A subscribed for 100 shares out of ABC Corporation, and then what A paid is only 20 of the shares, no? Did A comply with Section 13 or is the subscription contract with respect to A valid? Is, is A subscription contract with ABC Corporation valid? The answer is yes. Yes, 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 class. Take note of the word total subscription. Take note of the word total subscription. What the law requires under Section 13 is not compliance of the 25-25 threshold in all subscription contract, but only with respect to the total subscription. Again, I will repeat. The requirements under the old corporation code with respect uh, to the 25-25 threshold requirement applies only to the total subscription, meaning the subscription of the authorized capital stock of a corporation of a corporation in its entirety, kabuuan, the aggregate subscription, not the individual subscription of each of the stockholders. Meaning to say that even if a particular stockholder did not pay at least 25% of his individual subscription, then that subscription will still be compliant with the law because the law requires only the total subscription upon incorporation. After incorporation, the 25-25 threshold requirement under Section 13 no longer applies no longer applies. But that is under the old law. We will discuss this again when we reach the revised corporation code. Okay. Minimum capital stock and subscription requirement. There is no minimum authorized capital stock except as required by special law. So as a general rule, if there is no law which requires for a minimum authorized capital stock or the ACS, then that the general rule will apply that there is no minimum requirement. No, there is no minimum. You can, you can uh, register for um, as little or as much authorized capital stock as long as the minimum paid up capital is not less than 5,000 pesos. Now, class, if the Philippine government has a constitution, now we have the 1987 constitution, a corporation also has its own constitution in the form of an Articles of Incorporation. An Articles of Incorporation is the basic contract or the basic document in the corporation law that defines the charter, when you say charter class, parang constitution. It provides for the basic power of the corporation, what is the primary purpose of the corporation, et cetera, et cetera. It's the basic or the fundamental contract in the corporation code. Now. Section 13 of the Corporation Code provides that the Articles of Incorporation do not become binding as a charter of the corporation unless they have been filed with the SEC. So take note, class, that the Articles becomes binding as a charter only when it is filed with the SEC. Okay. What are the contents of an Articles of Incorporation? You have the name of the corporation, for example, ABC or XYZ Corporation or ABC Incorporated, as the case may be, no? 
depending upon what name was registered for the corporation, you have to indicate the primary and secondary purpose of the corporation class. And this will come handy. You know, the importance of stating the primary and secondary purpose of the corporation will, will uh, be appreciated later when it comes to the voting requirements in terms of investment of corporate funds to a secondary purpose. Now, the place of principal office class. No, as per SEC, kailangan ng principal office may exact address. Meaning to say, a street, a street name, a street number, barangay, and the municipality or city where it is located or the principal office is located class. When you say principal office, this is the office which is indicated in the Articles of Incorporation. Do not confuse this term with the principal business or principal place of business of the corporation. Kasi magkaiba yan, class. Ang principal office, this is the one which is indicated in the Articles of Incorporation. But there are co certain corporations because of its economic expansion or its uh, business expansion, no? although yung principal office nila is located in one place, they have extended actually to another place. But the question is, is the transfer of the principal business of the corporation affect the principal office of the corporation? The answer is no. The answer is no. The principal office of the corporation, as stated in the articles, will remain to be unaffected. Now, what the, the, the place which is indicated in the articles of incorporation will remain as its principal office. That's despite the fact that it may have moved its business somewhere else. Okay? The term of the corporation, which shall not be more than 50 under the old corporation code, name, citizenship, and residences of the incorporator's class. It is very important to indicate these things because, again, there are certain requirements of an incorporator. So for the SEC to readily identify if you have complied with these requirements, then you have to state the names, the citizenship, and the residences of the incorporators. Okay. Names, uh, number, names, citizenships, and residences of directors. Now, class, magkaiba yung incorporators sa directors. Kung incorporators, ikaw yung originally forming, uh, uh, ikaw yung original stockholders in the articles of incorporation. If you are a director, ikaw yung binoto ng board to be what? Officers of the corporation. Now, if a corporation is a stock corporation, then you have to state the authorized or the amount of the authorized capital stock Number of shares, etc., etc. Okay. So, and the, the par value of stock corporation, so the par value of each share, plus if the value of share is stated in the articles of incorporation, no, uh, the shares will be called as par value shares. Pero kapag ka yung value ng shares hindi nakalagay sa articles of incorporation, meaning to say it is a no par value share. No, no par value. The test, therefore, is whether the value of the share is indicated in the articles of incorporation. The number of shares and amounts of subscription, etc., etc. Okay. The name of the treasurer elected by the subscribers. Okay. If the corporation engages in nationalized activity or industry. A statement that no transfer of stock will be allowed if it will reduce the stock ownership of Filipinos to a percentage below the required legal minimum. You refer again, class, to the 11 negative list. Now, those businesses which are considered by law as a nationalized activity, and therefore, there are certain re restrictions. When it comes to foreign ownership, it can be no foreign ownership or 100% Filipino owned, just like a mass media, no? or it can be 25% uh, allowed to be owned by the foreigners depending on the kind of the business activity. You just have to refer to the 11 negative list. We will have a sep separate episode on that one. Okay. 
Now, amendment of articles of incorporation. Class, I assure you that you have to master the voting requirements under the corporation code. It is being asked in the board or the bar exam. Now, the voting requirements under the corporation code no, varies from the type of the matter being taken up. Now, depending on the, on the type or the kind of subject matter that is being taken up. No, so for the amendment of the Articles of Incorporation, the required vote is majority vote of the Board of Directors, take note, and the vote or written assent of the stockholders representing at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock. Take note of the voting requirement. Again, majority vote of the Board of Directors and vote or written assent of at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock. Okay. Same goes with the a non-stock corporation. Vote or written assent of at least two-thirds of the members. Okay. Now, class, how do you amend an Articles of Incorporation? Class, madali lang yan. No, you have to submit to the SEC the, um, the uh, amended Articles of Incorporation. And you just have to highlight, class. Or you have to underscore, rather. Not to underscore. You have to underline the portion which was actually changed or amended in the Articles of Incorporation. That is how easy it is. Okay. Now, requirements. Okay. When the SEC is satisfied that the amendment should be allowed, then the, issue, the SEC will issue a certificate of amended articles of incorporation. Okay. So when does the amendment take effect? No, it will take effect upon approval by the SEC no, from the issuance of, of the certificate of the filing of amended articles of incorporation or from the date of the filing with the SEC, if not acted upon within six months from the date of filing for a cost not attributable to the corporation. That is self-explanatory. I leave that to you. Now, there are certain items which cannot be amended or replaced in the Articles of Incorporation. Again, take note of these items which you cannot amend uh, you, e even if you have complied with the voting requirements, still you cannot replace these matters that are flashed in your screens. What are those? The names of incorporators. Very important, class. You cannot amend the names of the incorporators because it is an accomplished fact. It is a done. It's a done fact, no? The incorporators, again, who are they? They are originally forming of the corporation. They are the stockholders at the time of the signing of the Articles of Incorporation. Parang sila yung mga founders class. Sila yung mga naunang bumili ng shares of stocks at the time of the signing of the Articles of Incorporation. So hindi na pwedeng palitan ang mga pangalan nila class for the simple reason that they are the first who have subscribed and this is a fact which is already accomplished in the Articles of Incorporation. Even if there are other stockholders to purchase the stocks of the uh, corporation, no, it will not change the fact that you are an, incorpor an incorporator. Rather. Okay. The names of original subscribers, etc. The TIT or the trust. Uh, treasurer in trust elected by original subscribers, etc. The place of, and date of execution, the witnesses. So these are the matters which may not be amended or changed in the articles of incorporation. Now, class, I have emphasized this in, in part one of this uh, series, no? that a corporation commences to exist as a juridical personality only upon issuance of the certificate of incorporation. Kaya class, kung gusto niyong malaman kung ang isang entity ay rehistrado sa SEC o hindi, o allowed ba sila mag-exist as a corporation, you have to ask for a copy 
of the what? Certificate of Incorporation. Actually, class, pwede nyo yan ma-access sa website ng SEC. Okay. The issuance of the Certificate of Incorporation will give birth to the corporation as a juridical entity. Okay. Class, I told you during part one that you have to memorize the requisites of a de facto corporation under Section 20. Now, a de facto corporation class is a corporation claiming in good faith to be a corporation under the corporation code. In other words, class, itong corporation na to, no, merong defect, merong flow doon sa requirements niya na sinabmit sa SEC. No, it falls short of the requirements of the law. No, it is the result of an attempt to incorporate under an existing law coupled with the exercise of corporate powers. Now, a de facto corporation, because of an existing flaws in its incorporation, no, and ang remedy dyan class, para ma-declare sila as a de facto corporation or a non-compliant corporation, is the filing of a co-waranto proceeding, a petition for co-waranto under Rule 66 of the Rules of Court. It is only filed by, or it can only be filed by the Office of the Solicitor General. Plus, yung Office of the Solicitor General, yan ang abogado ng gobyerno. Kaya, class, if you are a private citizen, you cannot file a petition for co-waranto against a de facto corporation. Only the Office of the Solicitor General, or what we call OSG, hindi OMG, OSG, no Office of the Soldier, to file a petition for co-waranto proceeding to attack or to question no, a de facto corporation. Okay. A de facto corporation incurs the same obligation and have the same powers and rights as a de jure corporation unless and until that a de facto corporation is declared as such, it can incur obligation just like a de jure or perfectly compliant corporation. Okay? There are four requisites or four elements under Section 20 of a de facto corporation memorize these four elements of de facto corporation. Kalimutan nyo na lahat, class. Huwag nyo lang itong kalimutan. Hindi naman. Kalim Alalahanin nyo rin yung iba. Pero isama nyo ito, itong section 20. There are four elements again. Number one, a valid law. Number two, attempted in good faith to incorporate nor or a colorable compliance. Assumption of corporate powers and issuance of a certificate of incorporation. Without a certificate of incorporation, there can be no de facto corporation. Kailangan na isuhan muna siya ng certificate of incorporation. Plus, that is a basic requirement. Kung walang certificate of incorporation, there can be no de facto corporation. Actually, there can be no corporation at all. Now, class, in the case of Sawadjaan versus Court of Appeals, 459 SCRA 516 on page 2004, the Supreme Court said that if you fail to file your bylaws on time, no, a corporation can be considered as a de facto corporation. Kasi ganito yan, class. Pag nagrehistro ka ng kumpanya sa SEC, if I file mo yung articles of incorporation, yung treasurer's affidavit, and all other requirements, no? or pwede yung mga sex cert, isasabit mo sa SEC class, yung bylaws, hindi siya required na i-file upon incorporation or upon registration of the corporation. The bylaws under the corporation code can be filed within 30 days from the time of the issuance of the Certificate of Incorporation. So kahit wala kang bylaws, pwede kang marehistro sa SEC. Now, kung hindi mo naman na submit yung bylaws within the, the allowed time under the Corporation Code, which is 30 days, then your corporation becomes defective, becomes a corporation de facto or a de facto corporation. Now, 
if you fail to file the bylaws within the prescribed period, no, it does not ipso facto. It does not ipso facto. That means it is not automatically, the corporation does not automatically lose its powers. Ibig sabihin, class, kailangan pang mag ng Office of the Solicitor General ng petition for co-warranto before you could even be declared as a de facto corporation and therefore, um, uh, uh, you don't have the right to exist as a corporation. But again, class, if the Office of the Sol Gen does not file a petition for co-warranto under Rule 66 of the Rules of Court, then the presumption is that corporation is a de jure corporation. Okay, class. Corporation by Estopel is the same concept as what we have discussed under the law on partnership. Di ba, class, naalala nyo yung partnership by Estopel? Di ba? If a group of persons have misrepresented themselves to be forming of a partnership, but in truth and in fact, there is no registered partnership or there is no duly um, signed articles of partnership. So class, that concept is also the same in corporation by Estopel. Just take note that these persons who assume to, to act as a corporation, knowing it without authority to do so, is liable as general partners. Huwag niyong kakalimutan yan. Ha? Tandaan niyo yan. These persons who assume to act as a corporation, knowing it to be without authority, shall be liable as a blank general partners. Tandaan nyo yan, class. Okay? Okay, going to the next. So, class, a third party who assumes an obligation to an ostensible corporation cannot resist performance by alleging the ostensible corporation's lack of personality. Okay. So you have to compare between a de facto and a corporation by Estopel. No, a de facto corporation exists in the law, but a corporation by Estopel does not exist in the law. Kaya nga sabi ko class sa video natin sa law on partnership. A partnership by Estopel is not a partnership after all. It is not a partnership. Kaya lang siya tinawag na partnership by Estopel. Kasi because or by reason of these misrepresentations, the partners or the supposed partners are being held liable as general partners or as, or as, part, or as part of a partnership by Estopel. Partnership Estopel exists only as a concept for the purpose of fixing the liability of the purported partnership, but there is no partnership created by Estopel. Only for the purpose of fixing the liability of those who have mis misrepresented themselves as partners. Same concept applies under the Law on Corporation Code. Ha? A corporation by Estopel is not a corporation. Hindi siya corporation. Tinawag lang siya ng batas na corporation by equity or by estopel because they are estop, they are barred from denying their misrepresentation that they are forming a corporation and therefore they are liable as general partners. Okay. Dealings among parties on a corporate basis is not required no? in a de facto corporation no? but is required in a corporation by estopel. Lack of effect of lack of requisites, no, could be a corporation by Estopel, no, by but a corporation by Estopel, no, it is not a corporation in any shape or form. Now, class, another important concept in corporation code is the doctrine of juri separate juridical personality. Class, the corporation has its own name. Meron siyang sariling pangalan. Meron siyang sariling pagkakakilanlan. Meron siyang sariling personality. Now, yung personality ng korporasyon, kaiba yan sa personality ng stockholders. Kaiba yan sa personality ng board of directors. In other words, class, 
the corporation has a personality separate and distinct from those of the stockholders and the members and is not affected by the personal rights, obligations, and transactions of the latter. Now, class, for example, the liability of the, of the uh, acts of the directors, no? um, the personal liability of the directors will not in any way affect the liability of the corporation no? and vice versa. The corporation can has the right to bring actions under this name. Kaya class, pag nakapunta kayo ng musgado, may kita nyo dyan, for example, ABC Corporation versus X. Matataka kayo, bakit kaya pwede mag-file ang korporasyon ng isang demanda sa ilalim ng kanyang pangalan? Because the corporation has a separate juridical personality. In the eyes of the law, a corporation is just like a human person. No, with limited powers under Section 36. Now, the corporation can also acquire properties under its name. Kaya class, if you go to the Registry of Deeds, may kita nyo dyan, may mga titulong nakapangalan sa corporation. Because again, the corporation has a personality separate and distinct from the persons composing it. Okay. Acquisition of jurisdiction class, no? Uh, under Rule 14, Section 14, if I'm not mistaken, no, Rule 14, Section 14 of the Rules of Court, pag dinimanda mo ang isang corporation class, kailangan pag nag-serve ka ng copy ng summons, doon mo lang pwedeng iserve sa mga officers enumerated. That is under the 1997 Rules on Civil Procedure. I think may mga amendments na. But then again, for the purpose of this discussion, the court will acquire jurisdiction only upon compliance of the service of summons to the authorized or designated officers of the corporation. Pag sinerve mo yan, for example, sa janitor ng corporation, no, or kung kanino man na hindi authorized under the rules of court, then the court does not acquire jurisdiction over the corporation. In other words, class, walang kapangyarihan ang usgado sa corporation dahil hindi mo pinadalahan ng tamang um, summons. Okay. Now, class, kahit magpalit ng membership or ng stockholders, pareho pa rin ang juridical personality ng corporation. Kahit mamatay ang, stock, ang isang stockholder, mabubuhay na mananatiling buhay ang corporation. No? Meron siyang right of succession on its own. Okay, class. So as a general rule class, ang corporation cannot commit a crime. No, A corporation may not be punished under the revised, cor uh, revised penal code. Hindi mo pwedeng ikulong ang korporasyon. Di ba? Hindi naman siya tao. Alam nga namang barikadaan mo yung building. Di ba? A corporation cannot commit felonies under the revised penal code or crime, our criminal law. No? Because wala siyang intent to commit these crimes no the crimes of uh, which are personal in nature requiring personal performance etc etc this is only the general rule meron din namang exceptions no not exemptions exceptions e x c e p t i o n s exceptions now the exception to this general rule is that if the crime is committed by the corporation, sino ang magiging criminally liable? Class, yung director or yung corporate officer, yung president, yung CEO, employee or officers responsible for the offense. For example, class, merong falsification na nakommit ang isang corporation. Sino ang pwedeng kasuhan sa corporation? Yung pumirma doon sa board resolution or yung pumirma doon sa kontrata. Kasi siya ang responsible person or responsible officer of the corporation. Sa kanyang act yun. No? So pwede mo siyang idemanda actually class. Uh, I'm actually handling, uh, at present I'm handling a case regarding this one. No? Uh, Nag-file ako ng complaint for falsification ng isang public document. Kasi pingeke ng isang korporasyon 
actually bangko yun eh. Pineki ng isang bangko allegedly no yung yung deed of sale. Now dinaman ko yung bangko as the seller. Kasi yung bangko binenta niya yung property to my client. And then later on na transfer yung ownership ng property doon sa ibang tao. Now, yung nakabili doon ng sinasabing meron siyang deed of sale at meron siyang titulo, pinapaalis ngayon si client, no? Because the title was transferred in his name. Now, what I did is to file a complaint for pacification against the supposed owner of the property or the transferee and the bank. Dinamanda ang sagot ng bank hindi daw sila pwede maging criminally liable dahil corporation sila. Artificial being lang sila. Now, my answer is that, well, that is only the general rule. There is an exception to this general rule. If the crime is committed by a corporation, the director responsible for the offense or the director who have actually signed a falsified deed of document can be imprisoned by the court. No, that is the exception to the general rule. Actually, class, a corporation is also liable criminally no, if the penalty will involve the imposition of a fine. Pag sinabing fine, class, ang ibig sabihin niyan, penalty. No, hindi ibig sabihin, I'm fine. I'm fine, thank you. Hindi yan ibig sabihin niyan, class. When you say fine, ibig sabihin multa. Okay. Moral damages class. Ito, I remember this case. This was a sign when I was still in law school in 2014 no, sa Corporation Code. Ang naging issue dito class, pwede bang humingi ng danyos ang isang korporasyon? As a general rule class, hindi. Bakit hindi ng danyos ang korporasyon? Wala naman siyang pakiramdam. Wala naman siyang feelings. No, hindi naman siya pwede, hindi naman pwede mag-claim ang corporation that The corporation suffered besmirch reputation. Or, hindi siya makatulog. Eh, hindi naman tao yan, di ba? So, walang moral damages. Now, in the case of Filipinas Broadcasting Network versus Ago Medical and Educational Center, decided by the Supreme Court, the citation is 448 SCRA 413, no? 2005. In this case, class, ang nangyari dito, no, itong, itong Ago Medical, ay isang eskwelahan, isa siyang korporasyon. Tapos class, etong Philippines Broadcasting Network, no parang naglabas sila ng isang uh, uh, statement, no? Binroadcast nila, sinabi nila sa radio class. Sinabi nila na itong eskwelahan na to, Ago Medical, walang pumapasa, no parang school bukol, no para siyang in other words, parang the school is being described no as a uh, school bukol or a school uh, school which then does not produce um, uh, board passers so nagalit ngayon si Ago Medical dinemanda siya no humingi ng moral damages the case reached the supreme court and the issue in the supreme court is whether or not a corporation as an artificial being can claim for the payment of moral damages kasi class pag humingi ka ng moral damages again No, ang ibig sabihin ng moral damages, humingi ka ng danyos kasi hindi ka nakatulog, no? Nahirapan ka, mental anguish, social humiliation na pahiya ka, di ba? Okay. Ang sabi ng Supreme Court class, kung nag-commit ng defamation or ng libel against a corporation, siniraan mo ang isang korporasyon, siniraan mo ang isang eskwelahan, pwede kang mag-ask No, ng payment for moral damages. A corporation can recover moral damages under Article 2219 of the Civil Code if it was a victim of defamation. Kasi class, ang mga corporation, meron din siyang reputation or goodwill. Di ba class, for example, pag sinabing ano, uh, Jollibee, o pag sinabing or a certain corporation, SM, di ba? Meron siyang goodwill. Ibig sabihin, meron siyang Um, some form of uh, um, being known in the community or a certain reputation. No? So because there is a certain reputation, no, the corporation can file a, 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 uh, uh, 
complain for the libel or defamation and ask for moral damages. Okay. Now, class. As an offshoot of the doctrine of separate juridical personality, meron ding doctrine of piercing the corporate veil. Ano naman ang ibig sabihin niyan, class? Doctrine of piercing the corporate veil. Class, sabi natin kanina, ang korporasyon meron siyang sariling personality na hiwalay sa mga stockholders. Therefore, ang liability ng, ng corporation hindi din liability ng stockholders. Now, when you say piercing the corporate veil, the court is disregarding the separate personality of the corporation from its members class. Okay? Now, this doctrine means that the court may disregard the separate and distinct personality of the corporation from its members and treat the corporation as a mere collection of individuals, etc., etc. Okay? Kasi class, if the corporation's separate personality is used as a cloak or as a mere um, scheme no? for fraud or illegality, then the court will pierce the corporate veil. Ibig sabihin, it will disregard niya yung separate corporate personality. It is merely an equitable remedy and may be granted only in case where the corporate fiction is used to defeat public convenience, justify a wrong, protect fraud, defend crime, or where the corporation is a mere alter ego or business conduit of a person. Okay. Just memorize the requisites for the grounds of application of the doctrine of piercing the corporate veil. No? It is flashed in your screen class. Please memorize. You don't have time to discuss everything. I will just leave them to you. Okay. Test in determining the applicability. So just uh, go over this slide also. No, take note that uh, the mere fact that the corporation owns uh, the shares of stocks of another is not a sufficient reason to um, justify their being treated as one entity. Hindi komo ang isang corporation may ari ng shares of stocks ng another corporation i isang entity na sila. Hindi yan sapat na dahilan. No? Except, again, if the subsidiary is a mere instrumentality of the parent corporation. These are the circumstances justifying no, or rendering subsidiary as an instrumentality and therefore the court will pierce the corporate veil. For example, if the parent corporation owns all or most of the capital of the subsidiary, the court can pierce the corporate veil, meaning to say the court can treat the parent corporation and the subsidiary corporation as one entity and therefore subject to liability. No, et cetera, et cetera. Pag meron silang common directors, no, if the parent company finances the operations of the subsidiary, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Just familiarize yourselves with enumerations flash on your screens. Madami yan, class. Okay? So this ends our discussion, class. I hope you learned a lot uh, under Title Two of the Revised Corporation Code. Next episode, we will discuss Title Three. See you there.